I wanted to share with you my story about how I was able to save $100,000 by the time I was 22. I feel like we've all become accustomed to seeing people online talk about these really big numbers, $1 million, $10 million, half a billion dollars. And for me personally, these massive numbers just seem out of reach, so it makes it harder for me to relate to their stories. I mean, I can't exactly relate to an individual that already owns multiple companies and has a total of 32 different sources of income at the age of 17. So that's why I wanted to make this video about how I was able to save $100,000 because I feel like six figures is a realistic goal that most of us are trying to achieve. I'm going to share everything I did and all the decisions I made leading up to hitting my goal of six figures. And I'm hoping that this video can somewhat inspire you on your own journey to achieving whatever financial milestone that you're working towards, no matter how small that might be. When I graduated from college, my net worth was pretty much zero dollars. But in the space of just one to two years, I managed to surpass the six figure mark. In order to explain how I was able to accomplish this in a relatively short amount of time, we need to rewind all the way back to my high school days. Growing up, my parents always taught me the importance of hard work and working for your money. It was pretty much expected that if I wanted to attend college, then I should do everything I can to pay for that education by myself. And back then, I decided that college was something that I wanted to do. So in high school, I had to find a way to make money. I had a job at a local bakery during my junior and senior year, which helped me save up a few thousand dollars. But the main thing I did was actually put my focus into working hard on my schoolwork. And that really paid off because because I got good grades and ended up receiving several scholarships to a few of my top choices in terms of colleges. I was also applying for private scholarships where I had to interview and everything, and I ended up landing a scholarship from this method as well. And these scholarships were what really set me up for success after I graduated from college, since I was able to escape the biggest money trap that most young people fall into, which is student debt. I find it so crazy that the average student debt for a four-year degree is $34,100. And I decided a long time ago before college that I would try my best to avoid student debt as much as I could. I did actually end up taking out a little bit of student debt, just around $5,000 or so, but this is still a lot less than most students take out. And not taking on a lot of student debt played a huge role in achieving my goal of $100,000 because when I graduated college, I was able to start building wealth right from the get-go. Whereas most young graduates can't do this. They first have to spend years paying off tens of thousands of dollars in student loans. Anyways, despite graduating with a pretty good GPA and a business degree, I was one of those 20 20 graduates that graduated during the pandemic so I still found it hard to get my career started. My first job out of college wasn't the highest paid. To be exact, I was only getting paid $18 an hour working as a project manager for a startup digital marketing agency. And I feel like this was one of those pivotal moments in my financial journey because I was put into the position to make one of two choices. I could choose to be complacent and stay at my job. I would continue to be paid lower than what I was worth in the job market. And with this option, the only light at the end of the tunnel was to hopefully get a 3% raise at the end of the year. Or I could choose to put myself out of my comfort zone and look for another job. And that's something I really didn't want to do because looking for a new job is just the worst. And I was a little bit scarred from the first time I was on the job hunt, so I really didn't want to do this. But I ended up choosing the second option, which was to job hop. This is the second thing I did that really went a long way in helping me reach my milestone of $100,000. It was 2021 and the job market started to heat up again. So I decided to try my luck and started applying to jobs again. And it was really nice to actually find that I was having a lot more success in the job market than I did the last time that I was applying. Because when I was applying for jobs the first time, it felt like I was doing everything possible to get a job, yet I was still getting rejection after rejection. And even though that was during the pandemic and I knew the job market wasn't great, I couldn't help but think that there was something wrong with me or my resume. But it turns out there wasn't, and this time around, I was getting a lot of interviews. I got a few good job offers and ended up accepting another project management position at a much more established company. And the pay was much, much better than before. And all of this extra income allowed me to start putting away a good portion of my paycheck every month into savings. But if it wasn't for this next thing that I did, then reaching my goal of $100,000 wouldn't have ever been possible. Living within your means. I swear the first thing most young people do when they get their first real job is buy a nice car. I actually know a guy that bought a brand new truck and his monthly debt payment on his truck was actually higher than what he was paying for rent at the time. A new car is a big destroyer of wealth for most people. And I didn't wanna make the same mistake most people make of having all of my extra savings being thrown away on a car. So what I decided to do was buy a used Toyota Corolla and this is one of the best financial decisions I've made. I bought my car in cash for $10,500 and it was about three years old at the time when I got it. And I figured that this was the perfect 
perfect time to buy a car in terms of the life cycle of the car. Cars experience the majority of their depreciation in value in the first few years of ownership. So I figured I was buying at a good time for a good price while the car was also new enough to be in good condition still. And I'm so glad I made that decision because I still have the same car today and it's been incredibly reliable. So I haven't had to spend a lot of money on maintenance. I also decided to live within my means when it came to other big purchases like my phone. This iPhone 6 was the phone I had from the time I was 17 all the way until just this last year when it finally started to fail on me. Phones are another big wealth killer. I mean, think about how many people you know that work a minimum wage job, yet still find a way to buy the latest iPhone every single year. I didn't want to fall into the whole keeping up with the Joneses mentality, so I stuck with my iPhone 6 until it pretty much stopped working. And even though it sucked a little because the camera was pretty bad compared to what you get today and every call I made dropped, I honestly think that it was worth the money that I saved. Overall, I lived below my means, but if I'm being honest, I wasn't overly frugal. I've always been a strong believer that money should actually be used for enjoyment. I decided to focus on saving money when it came to these bigger purchases, like a car or a phone, because these are the things that make the biggest impact on your finances, not things like whether or not you buy that $2.85 coffee from Starbucks. But over the past few years, I realized something. Avoiding debt and living within your means are both different forms of the same thing. They both fall under financial defense, but you can't just play defense. You have to also play financial offense. You have to try to make more money because it's easier to increase your savings when you're not solely focused on reducing your expenses. So over the last few years, I made sure to experiment with ways to make more money outside of my regular nine to five through side hustles. The very first side hustle I tried was food photography. I chose this side hustle because food photography was a hobby of mine at the time. And money aside, I literally just enjoyed taking pictures of food and sharing the pictures I took on my socials. And I guess you could say that I spotted an opportunity in the market because I noticed that a ton of local restaurants in my area did a terrible job of taking pictures of their food. But it was when a cheesecake shop opened up just a few houses down from my apartment that I thought, you know what? Why don't I walk in there and try to sell them my food photography as a service? Because they really needed it. Their pictures on Instagram were pretty poor, honestly. I was really nervous and I kind of had to suck myself up a bit at first before walking into the shop and asking to speak to the owner. I had a conversation with the owner about how I think my food photography skills could help their new business. They were pretty confused about the whole thing at first, but I still ended up signing them on for a monthly retainer at a few hundred dollars a month. Since then, I've started a few new side hustles, including two different YouTube channels. This is obviously one of them. And from these YouTube channels, I've been able to make an extra $1,000 to $3,000 a month, which all goes towards increasing my savings and investments. And if there's one thing that I want you to take away from this, it's that starting a side hustle can take a lot of dedication and it can even be scary. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared of walking into that cheesecake shop for the first time or uploading my first video to YouTube for everyone to see. But overall, it's so incredibly worth it. You never know what a side hustle can turn into. Your little side hustle that starts out in your garage could one day turn into a business that allows you to quit your nine to five job. You just never know. For me, my side hustles helped me accomplish the thing that eventually led to my net worth surpassing the $100,000 mark, buying a house. Before I lived here, I was living in a tiny one bedroom apartment. You can even see in my earlier videos on this channel that I would have to film my videos sitting at my kitchen countertop because there wasn't any extra space in my apartment. I was also working remotely from home, so I really wanted to move into a bigger space. The only problem was this was also in 2021 when the housing market was quite literally the most competitive it had ever been in history. So buying a house turned out to be quite the challenge to say the least. I was putting in offers on houses at $20,000 above the the asking price, which I know sounds crazy, but at the time the housing market was so competitive that this was standard practice. And for a long time, this still wasn't enough because my offers were still getting rejected. But eventually one offer I put in, again at 20K over the asking price, ended up getting accepted. And that's the house I live in today. Buying a home was another great financial decision I made. I worked out that when you take into account my mortgage payoff and the tax benefits from owning real estate, it actually costs me about the same amount to live in this house as it did to live in my old apartment. So in my situation, it was a no brainer to buy a house instead of continuing to rent my apartment. And since buying this home, the price of the home has appreciated considerably, which is what ultimately took my net worth well past $100,000. Now, I wanted to also mention that over the last few years, I've been consistently investing my savings into the stock market. But because of how the markets have performed over the last few years, my investments didn't really contribute at all to growing my net worth. So that's why I didn't spend a lot of time talking about it. But I hope that my story has inspired you to step out of your comfort zone and take the risks needed to achieve your financial goals. Remember to not focus your time and energy
energy on just financial defense, but to also focus on financial offense as well. One of the best ways you can do this is to start one of the seven side hustles that I talk about in this video that have the potential to make you hundreds of dollars per day. 